Ahead in the glass house, Princess Anne is delighted when Jake the Peg reveals that actually isn't an extra leg. And she gave me a lovely smile and said, this was a pleasure I wasn't expecting today. <laughs> Welcome to The Glass House, the program that asks the question, even though today's anniversary of JFK's death is sad, isn't it good at least one American president showed a bit of brains? <laughs> More news than cricket tragic heaven this week. In Oklahoma City, a teacher has come up with a solution to the problem of school shootings. Thicker textbooks which students can hold in front of themselves <laughs> to deflect bullets. <laughs> yeah, hold your books in front of your chest. Encourage the headshot. <laughs> if only JFK had been reading a thick book on this day in 1963, <laughs> he probably would have died in the 80s from an STD. <laughs> Are you looking for a gift for the newborn who has everything? Then how about babytoupay.com? <laughs> Thank God, now your bald baby won't look like some kind of freak. <laughs> there are four different styles. The Lil' Kim, which also comes with a strap-on booty that doubles as a nappy. There's the Donald. <laughs> which I reckon's a worry. It looks way too much like real hair. <laughs> For the reggae baby, there's the Bob. Perfect for the kid who's progressed from sucking on a bottle to sucking on a bong. <laughs> and if you want your bub to be the star of Snakes in a Pram, there's a Samuel L. <laughs> Do you think they could find a black kid to model at least one of these, wouldn't you? <laughs> the only problem with the Samuel L is baby's first words end up being motherfucker. <laughs> Which is offensive unless they're referring to their daddy. <laughs> In Jakarta, a uni student has just been released after spending four months in jail for calling the Indonesian president a dog and cat excrement. <laughs> of course, you wouldn't face that sort of penalty in this country, although cat shit might sue you for defamation. <laughs> but dog isn't much of an insult. If only there was some way to make fun of Cicillo Bambang Yudhoyono's name. <laughs> We're just lucky we live in a country where you can make jokes about the government without getting in trouble for it. <laughs> <laughs> News from below the waist, Will Agra. Hmm? The world's first sperm bank for koalas is a step closer after eight babies created by artificial insemination were born on the Gold Coast. Of course, most Gold Coast koalas usually get inseminated during schoolies. <laughs> That's not Caramello. <laughs> the sperm bank is koala friendly too, with magazines like Naturally Hairy, Bear Assed Bears, Freaky Fur Burgers. <laughs> Sleepy chicks up trees. <laughs> or for the really kinky koala, Hot Wombat Monthly. <laughs> the biggest problem for koala fertility is premature ejaculation, which is how Blinky Bill got his name. <laughs> which is why those big wilderness society ones are always carrying buckets. <laughs> Stop it! That was filthy! Danger! Oh, oh, I am excited! 
Good one. I'm excited because the ashes start tomorrow and I'm not talking about bushfire season. <laughs> I'm talking about Brisbane, all right? And we play England and we need it to rain in this country, but not in Brisbane in the next five days. <laughs> we want you know what anything that annoys me about the cricket starting is that me and John Howard are going to be excited at the same time. <laughs> That's not right. I mean, I know that John loved his cricket and he, you know, his dream wasn't to be Prime Minister, it was to be a test cricketer. If only he had have achieved his dream! <laughs> Seriously though, but it's, it's, it's ironic though, it's a time when two countries come together so they can hate each other. The Barmy Army are, Barmy Army are over here and they're, making, they're gonna make terrible songs about Australia. Apparently they're gonna sing that we all come from a penal colony. <laughs> yeah, well it must be a hot prison like on prison break where everyone's hot, yeah. <laughs> Not like them over there. And they're going to have a go at Shane Warne so that he's a fat git. Well, he's a fat git that had sex with every woman in your country. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Joining me, Green and Dave, the frozen stones in the glass house tonight. Two of the best for our second last, Molly Meldrum! <laughs> All right, movers and shakers. Oh, God. What? Well, you just frightened the shit out of me when you yelled like that. <laughs> you won't come Did you, well, you've been on the show about ten times. Did you not know I was going to talk at the start? <laughs> I thought the ABC had, ch had, said, had changed so much that we'd gone to a commercial break, because that pause is awfully long. <laughs> I, I, they tell me I have to pause at the start. They have to set everything. I have to go like this. Oh, I see. And then start. Oh, well, it works then. <laughs> well, normally it works, but you've kind of fucked it up. <laughs> Molly, is, this, is, this your, is this your first day in television, Molly? Or... <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you, Ken? You're on short. I didn't start. <laughs> Did somebody take Grandpa's meds? <laughs> it was me. Was it you, Jimmy? <laughs> they were good, too. They were good? Yeah. They're the only ones you take these They're days. Excellent. Prescription yeah, exactly. medication. Molly's me medication. Yeah. <laughs> Incidentally, what is your name again? <laughs> oh, Alzheimer's. Dude, not the first time you've said that to a guy. <laughs> Start the bloody started show, right? Yeah, <laughs> haven't even started yet. All right. <laughs> All right, moves and shakers. First up, a British woman, Alexandra Saunders, who's trying to pay off a £15,000 credit card debt by selling her eggs on the internet. But how's the kid going to feel when it asks its mummy where it came from and she says, eBay? <laughs> Happily, while most of Alexandra's eggs will be used for fertilising, she's selling the rest to kids who want to throw them on muck-up day. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you love paying your bills. How good are you with money? I think you're going to talk about fertilising. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not particularly good with money, but I don't think I'd be as drastic as, you know, selling somebody's eggs. That's no, it's, Well, would you sell your own what you have? But, would you reckon? <laughs> um, could, could people buy a bottle yeah. of Jimmy on the net? Yeah. Eggs. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. You'd have to have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind selling some some, Would you? some of my what I've have. Yep. Really? Do you think yeah. there's a market for that, Dave? Well, there may be. <laughs> Could be. Molly, have you ever been asked to father a child? Has mm. anyone ever gone like yeah. this? So you've been asked. Yeah. By by lady friends of yours. Absolutely. Yeah, I was right. En engaged three times. Oh, were you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Three times. Yeah. And why, why didn't they work out? <laughs> Oh, just now. a difference of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> when, did you, when, did you, when did you break it off? On the wedding day? Is it, no, I'm not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant the room. I meant the room, not the... You people are dirty. <laughs> Did mean the room. <laughs> Did you keep in contact with any of them? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah, um, my f first girlfriend. Um, I've seen that. Uh, the, <laughs> no, my first fiance, fiance. Well, girlfriend, fiance, whatever. Um, we were both in the cheer squad of St Kilda together, and. Um, <laughs> 
the romance. <laughs> we don't have to give, oh, it, give us an S. No. Give us a word. And we were, we were, and um, in the 1966 <laughs> grand final, oh, well, we won. camped outside the MCG in a sleeping bag together. In a sleeping bag together. Mm. Wow, and that would. But cold. that's when I got the liking for camping. <laughs> It's almost, it's almost broke back mountain in reverse, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Well, how are, how, are you, how are you guys with debt? Like, how are you guys, do you spend like, a lot of money on your credit card? What about you, Barnes? Are you like a... Absolutely. No, I, reckon, I reckon spend it up front. You know, I, when I die, I want to have sort of my ashes scattered in my bank manager's face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking Actually, it with, me. With, with With the life you've led, I wouldn't mind a line of your ashes at the funeral. <laughs> What about you, Husey? You don't spend much money, do no, you? You I make don't. a lot of coin and you don't spend Oh, it. you don't have to tell the tax you tight? Honest, that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tired, I just don't, I'm too lazy to spend money, you know? I, I like, sh like, Hungry Jacks. <laughs> 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 I can't be bothered, yeah. But my girlfriend, if she wants to spend it, spend it, I tell her. Bloody spend it. I don't care, just, just do it. Um, and don't an annoy me. <laughs> He's not joking. He's not joking. I said to her today, she said, oh, look, you say I can spend your money and, the, and then you said you'll pay me back and then you forget to pay me back. I say, well, tell me. I'm happy to give you money. Go to the bag. <laughs> you keep the money in a bag? Oh, granddad. <laughs> there's a bag of money under your bed. No, it's not. No, I, you burglars, you don't know where the bag is. <laughs> Our next movers and shakers come from China. Not content with controlling TV, radio, newspapers, magazines and the net, government censors are now turning their attention to karaoke bars. <laughs> According to the Ministry of Culture, karaoke needs to be monitored to ensure it meets government standards. So, am I ever going to see your face again is probably out. No way. <laughs> Anyone caught singing banned songs will be taken away and tortured. Those in the audience will be spared on the grounds that listening to a drunk accountant from Shanghai murdering achy breaky heart is torture enough. <laughs> Corinne, you have the voice of an angel. Are you a karaoke fan? Singing in public is the one thing that just makes me go, oh. and I, I've done it twice because I had to because I was at girlfriend's birthday parties. And I'm really bad. Every Both times I picked, what, what's, the, you know, that... Knock, 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 go on wood. Yeah, Tony yeah. Stewart. Yeah, that one. And, I, every t and the second time I picked it as well, forgetting that there's that bit in the middle of it that goes really high. Oh, yeah, it does. So right. I'm saying, I'm going, oh, I'm here. And then it gets a bit more going, <laughs> Into a microphone. That's me singing. Could you sign me to your label? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm looking for a job, Molly. <laughs> well, well, I signed Peter Andre. Anything's possible. <laughs> Uh, so this is a fact. I had an end of tour party and Molly sang I Am Woman one time. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? I didn't think we had to say that. Here. <laughs> how, how was it? Did he like? Because he obviously he's been around music all his life. Did he? How did he learn? Yeah, yeah. He was very convincing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe him. I've like, actually got a karaoke album. Do you? Yeah, you do. Oh, you do. Yeah. 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 And the reason I did it is because every night I see these people in the audience singing the wrong words. And so I thought they could learn the words at the same time. As it? You're giving people permission to murder your song? Absolutely. I've been doing it for years. <laughs> <laughs> the other time, the other things I've done, though, is I've, I've actually walked past and heard people singing my songs in karaoke bars, and I've gone in and heckled. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know? And they're, they're doing one of my ballads, and I'll yell, like, do K-San. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just... Our favourite mover and shaker comes from New York, where a gym... Oh, just one more thing, though, on that... On, on that, <laughs> on that karaoke thing. Sorry, no. No, no, I just want to tell you this, because yeah, what no, Jimmy please. said is very interesting. Go on, Because man. in the Kylie concert, mm. at the very end, yeah. uh, when she does the final number, that all comes up on the screen, and it's fantastic, because all the crowd mm. sing along with it. 
Um, and it's, it's, it's brilliant. Do you yeah. do that when you sing? Do you go, everyone, you all know it, so you do this bit? And... No, nah, the only time you do that, and, and I've seen so many singers do that, they only do that when they forget the words. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do anyway. You know? and, and I think the only time I've ever got the crowd to sing along was, was actually the last stand, Cold Chisel in Sydney, and I forgot the words to Case Sound. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a the fact. The third train out of Launceston is <laughs> <laughs> coming soon. It's really bad. Yeah. It's I always, about... uh, was it a train or a plane? It was a plane, you know. Yeah, so you can't get a train to Vietnam. You have to hold your back for long. <laughs> did, did you like when people sang along, though? Is that is that or is that annoying? No, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. yeah, it's good. It's actually a train. A plane. <laughs> <laughs> actually, what is it? <laughs> Jesus, no one else can get out of. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just confused. That's how much I know about music, <laughs> don't I? It is, it's definitely a plane, believe it's me. It's a plane. It's a plane. <laughs> Our favourite mover and shaker comes from New York, where a gym with a huge set of rules for its members called the police when a weightlifter grunted. <laughs> Planet Fitness Gym says they're only trying to offer customers a non-intimidating environment, whereas seeing someone who grunted being dragged out by the cops is so reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> and if you lift a heavy weight, you're supposed to say, Goodness gracious. <laughs> Gee willikers, what a challenging task. <laughs> Molly, you oh. like to feel the burn. It's a muscle oh, thing. <laughs> what gets your goat at the gym? Is that serious about that? Yes. No, I'm making it all up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's serious. Show. Show. <laughs> what used to annoy me of grunting or making those sort of sounds. Don't go there. Peter no. Andre. Don't go there. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere near there, you know? I remember oh. that fellow. He was a lovely chap. <laughs> oh, no, no, Just because no. you were going to stay Don't start, Jimmy, for God's sake, you know? Now, what was I going to say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I mean, what used to annoy me um, when you're watching tennis? Um, with the, you know, all that oh, grunting, yeah. grunting. Monica Sellers, remember oh, that? Oh, yes. Sheriff well, Ivan is bad as well. Well, I, was, like I objected a... her grunting. She got stabbed in the back. <laughs> no, but Sad. Monica Sellers sounded like a, a pig hunting for truffles. <laughs> <laughs> but I reckon it'd be worse in the gym if somebody had Tourette's and was, <laughs> was, <laughs> was grunting. Uh, one, two, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's enough, that's enough. I don't know if that'd be worse. I think that'd be awesome. <laughs> I grunt whenever I bend over these days. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh, great, Dad. Do up my shoelaces where I go, oh. Hopefully it's, just, <laughs> no, hopefully it's just to pick up your bag. <laughs> yeah, but you've got that much money in the bag, have you? That's what it is. Later in the glass house. Dick Cheney admits the war in Iraq is like driving a car with no brakes, a blacked out windscreen and someone in the back seat punching you. It's full speed ahead on that basis. <laughs> the Greens receive a mysterious package containing a bloody lump of coral and the message Antarctica is next. It means the Great Barrier Reef's dead. <laughs> And the religious right's worst fears about cloning are realised when boffins try to breed a bull with a pig. Tonight's question on the glass house is, what's your favourite wedding story? Let's find some answers. What's your best wedding story? I haven't got one, Dave. Have you been married yourself? Yeah, 19 years. Well, that's probably your best story, though, the day you met the woman that you married and, you know... I went to school with her. Yeah, she dumped me for another bloke and then she come back with me Five years later. Yeah, when he went bald, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so it's only at the moon. What's your favourite wedding story? Oh, I've only been to one once and I was like two years old, so I don't really have one. Well, so you shut your dax and went home, yeah? <laughs> what is your uh, best wedding story? Dave, there's nothing good about a wedding. Marriage is an outmoded construct, patriarchal construct. Mm. Um, he was an arsehole, was he? Absolutely. What is your uh, best wedding story? I got none. You've never been to a wedding? Only one. Whose was it? Um, uncle's. Is he still married? Yeah, I think so. You haven't kept in touch? No. Maybe he's watching. Shout out. What's his name? Oh, uh, wait, what is... <laughs> I forget. You're a close family, aren't you? Yeah? <laughs> What's your best wedding story? My parents' wedding. And my dad was ill at the time, so he couldn't eat any of the banquet food. 
So yeah, he had to eat porridge. Are you around then, or was this? No, 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 no you were. Hey, what's your best wedding story? Uh, I'm his mother. Oh, you're his mother. So you're, you're, you married the porridge man. Yes. What was wrong with him? Well, he he returned from his study in the U.S. and then he just start to eat the local food again, and he got typhoid. No, oh, he, he, he got typhoid. Did you have to stay away from him on the wedding night. We're well, not telling. <laughs> News for Hubbards, Tom Cruise has finally married Katie Holmes, lucky number three wife and mother of his strangely old baby. <laughs> and it was a passionate ceremony. When the vows were over, the priest said, you may now jump up and down on the bride. <laughs> of course, while it looked like a wedding, it was actually Tom adopting Katie. <laughs> as well as the Catholic service, there was a final ritual conducted by Scientology members. Unfortunately for Tom, two ceremonies mean two prenups. To collect, Katie has to stay with him for ten years, after which she's allowed to leave and marry the country singer of her choice. <laughs> that is shocking. <laughs> Poor Nicole. Excuse <laughs> I'd like your help. I want you to be the baby of the happy couple. <laughs> and we're going to interview you. First question, Surrey Dave Holmes Cruz Hughes. Yeah. How was the wedding? It was really hard to get through it, sober. Really? Yeah, boring as bat shit. What? So Tom didn't do anything crazy, your dad? He married a woman. So... <laughs> I know you got your dad's hair. I've got his hair, yeah. yeah that's good. Yeah. Got his genitals too. So... Are you a girl? Oh. A girl. Uh... <laughs> What does Suri actually mean? It means really, really hairy baby. I'm, I'm a bit worried. Yeah. Uh, because you remind me of someone else uh, that I actually had to work with at one stage, you know? Sure. Ah. Yes. You're talking about Brad Pitt, are you? No, <laughs> no, no, I'm talking about Dickie Nee. Oh. You'll find that he was just a stick, and there's a lot more to me than me stick, I can tell you. <laughs> your mother is, is Catholic, and your father's a Scientologist. Which way are you going to swing? Oh, I'm going to be an atheist, because religions offer... Oh, they must make you a freak by looking at those two. <laughs> I don't want to bloody hang out with science people. <laughs> What is, uh, you seem to know a lot about the religions, so what is actually a Scientologist? Oh, they hang around with buns and burners and that, <laughs> that. <laughs> Are you going to go into movies like your mum and your dad? Yeah, I am, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm going to go into, I'm going to be play. F I'm going to go, I'm going to... I'm going to go to movies. <laughs> What sort of movies? Kids like movies. Oh, yeah, like what? Like, uh, like one of those kids ones. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Oh, like, uh, Harry and the, uh, furry kid. <laughs> <laughs> do you, um, do you hang out with other celebrity babies? Yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, right. yep, yep, I do, yeah. Like who? Uh, Madonna's new one's good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like his name, though, David. <laughs> what sort of freak name is that? You know? What about um, Brad and Angelina's? Yeah, yeah. What's, yeah. what's their baby's name again? Uh, I just call him mate because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so many, I don't know, I can't count anymore. What's, what's your dad's favourite movie? What, what's, favorite your favorite, movie? What's, um, what's your favourite movie of his? I like the one where he played uh, a short guy with a big nose. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 that was Nicole again. <laughs> she didn't play a guy, she played the, uh, the, you know, the writer. That's my... Oh, Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf. Mm. You're talking about the ex-wife of my father. I am. Back off, hat man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a particularly angry baby, why is that? Because uh, it's past my bedtime. <laughs> It's time to award the coveted Glasshouse Trophy, which is because good. And the winners of the 
jerky on your grapes, cheeky, tasty buttocks come from Western Australia, where a Margaret River meat company is feeding its premium cattle a local red wine. At last, an animal treatment that's been extensively tested on humans. <laughs> because there's nothing funnier than a pissed cow. <laughs> but if you think cattle are stupid normally, wait till you see them smashed. They think the funniest thing in the world is tipping each other over. <laughs> So the trophy goes to the famous Wagyu cattle of WA. When the wine is mixed in with their feed, each animal consumes about a litre a day for 60 days. The problem is, after they've put away a litre of red, all the cows want to go out for a kebab. <laughs> well, that's the way it is for Wednesday, November the 22nd. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank no you, worries. Molly. Thank you. Don't forget, kids, next week at the special time of 9pm, 9pm, 9pm. The 2006 Glasshouse Awards for Excellence. Last chance to get in the house. Last chance to see something that'll make the veins in your temple throb. And let's take a look at tomorrow's headlines. The Tizer says, I'm staying on Vows Beasley. Pledges to remain leader of the Labial Party. <laughs> From the Courier Mail, Beasley slams Foreign Minister's criticism. Calls him Alexander Downey Jr. <laughs> The Canberra Times reports, Beasley meets with U2 singer, calls him Yoko Bono. <laughs> and in the West Australian, Beasley promises unfair dismissal tribunal, calls it bunhead dismal trilby. <laughs> Good night, last glass house ever next week. Sarah.